Foot Clan, before we start today's show, got a great message from our friends at NHTSA. I'm not going very far. I'm in a rush. It's too uncomfortable. There is no such thing as a good excuse for not buckling up. If you've used any of these excuses, you're putting yourself at risk of injury, even death. Maybe that's not enough to convince you. Consider this. Not buckling up could cost you lots of money. Cops are writing tickets, so why take the risk? Do the smart thing. Start buckling up every trip, day or night. Click it or tick it. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, Children of all ages, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you are nasty. Oh, I'm nasty. <laughs> so, so you forget the name of our own show? Uh, I often forget the name of my own self, Mike. So, yes, welcome in. I am your fearless leader for the day, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Right, joined by my brand new best friend, Jason oh, Moore. Yes. Andy Holloway is out for the day, but do not fret. We got a fantastic show. We got some buy or sell. We got the Thursday night breakdown. We got news and notes. And the moment you've all been waiting for, the fantasy playoff primer. Getting ready, Jason. It is time. It is time to start looking at the playoff matchups. Yeah, I mean, this This is exactly when you should be doing it. There's enough data to be sure of matchups to the best you know that we that we can be and you know you've got a couple weeks left a lot of a lot of leagues this is your trade deadline it's it's this week it's next week you might want to flip a guy um I, i've got one player in particular i think if i had him i am trading Ooh. high on this player oh that's quite the foreshadowing <sighs> you'll stay have to tuned. stay tuned <laughs> and of course <laughs> jay grizz the cardboard bear extraordinaire is holding things down over on the other side of the table. We'll see what he can offer to the conversation. Make sure you subscribe to the show if you want to see our beautiful faces, if you want to see the Cardboard Bear Extraordinaire, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Please subscribe. Please click the bell. Our other socials, you know, the, the Twitter. Maybe on Twitter. Oh, Jason, have you seen the the, the race for 200,000 Twitter follows on the, the main account? It is on. Oh, let's get there. Let's get there by 2 o'clock. At the FF Ballers. Follow me at FF Hitman. Jason is at Jason FFL. And Andy is at Andy Holloway. The Megalodon Show, Jason. Oh. Ho, ho. The Megalodon. Man. Oh. <sighs> you better get it warmed Man. up. Man. Callus that throat over. <laughs> Thank you. We are. Megaloba. <laughs> I said Wait, the <laughs> Megalodon. <laughs> the Megalodon Show is coming. I Soon. I heard Megalobol. <laughs> it wasn't even a word. I got used to saying Megalobol, but uh, the Megalobol playoffs are starting soon. The Megalodon episode, our over two hour long episode, will be coming up in two weeks. Yes, that is our Thanksgiving special, our annual Thanksgiving special. That's coming up in two weeks. Hey, you want to win something for free? FootClanGiveaway.com. We are giving away a signed Kenny G jersey. Jason. It's time to buy or sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. The results of week nine's buy or sell, they are in. I took things home, Jay. You did. With, with a big offer. <laughs> that is true. I got J.K. Dobbins' uh, scrimmage yards correct. And Andy also nailed Marvin Jones. Uh, I can't as, believe Marvin Jones wasn't a top 24 guy. Yeah, reading this, it, it's surprising because I... Shame on you, Marvin. Right. It was like, well, not only that, but he had a decent game. You know, right. he was he was the wide receiver 29. So I feel like we were right in buying it, but no, we were wrong. All right. On this week's edition, James Conner. He gets to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Not a tough matchup by any stretch but a top 10 running back last week, James Conner. 
<laughs> and not the good kind of 55. Just was, outside the top 10. <laughs> it's the running back 55 in a juicy matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. Why? We still don't know. We still don't know what happened. They just kept taking him off the field. They said, hey, Benny Snell, you uh, you should get on the field. Hey, uh, Anthony McFarland, why don't you get out there and get on the show? Now James Conner has been a top 10 running back. Well, inside the top 10 twice. He was the RB10 in week two against the Denver Broncos. So, Jason, top 10 against the Cincinnati Bengals. You buying or selling? So, I think I think this is uh, an interesting line. I think the line might be too high here because – I can tell you, as someone who has James Conner in my main league and you watch that game, you're worried that, oh, no, has there been a change? Has there been any kind of transition? Is there an injury that's being dealt with, not being talked about? And you're worried about, should I start him? And and if that was the case, I would give a resounding yes. I, I believe you should start him. I've moved it. It's top You've, 15 now. I think that's a great line. That's why I'm way better at this job than Brooks. Oh, man. Get I'm doing – I'm hosting – I'm changing the show, Doc. You're answering? I'm, I'm What's your answer, Mike? My answer is, <laughs> what? What? why didn't you tell me your answer, Jason? <laughs> I'm, I I'm, move the line. I am going to sell even at the 15. I think that this week I'm confident in James Conner as an RB2. I, I believe he'll still get the major work, but he really hasn't been great this year. He's been as solid as it comes for the majority of the year you know, pretty much always being a top 24 back except this last week and outside of week one. How do you say that's not great? What I'm saying is not great is he has not given you those monster games. When you talk about the, the great backs, you talk about your Camaras and your Cooks and your Henrys, that they'll, they'll have those explosion games. I mean, James Conner hasn't really been putting up those regular top five finishes. He hasn't had a top five finish once this year. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Is the elite week. And so I'm going to sell the top 15. So we saw his running back attempt share at 60% last week. The, the previous weeks, you had 94% against Baltimore, 83% of the running back attempts against Tennessee. A top 15 against the Cincinnati Bengals. I am willing to buy it for James Conner. I think this was just a strange blip on the radar. They had their game plan. The game plan involved trying to get James Conner some rest against a very inferior opponent. The game plan kind of bit him in the butt, but they made it out alive, and James Conner got some rest. Carson Wentz, the New York Giants are his opponent this week, a top-10 quarterback, Jason. Can he do it? We've seen him do it twice, and in, in fact, it was – twice in his last three games, including a matchup against the New York Giants where he was the QB7. Top 10, buy or sell? Oh, man. It's ironic because if you look at the opponent in the New York Giants, they have only given up a top 10 twice on the year. Wow, that's, imp but that's impressive. It's twice in the last two weeks, or to oh, twice no. in the last three weeks, and one of them, like you said, was Carson Wentz. I think the, I, I think the line of him hitting a top 10 is going to be difficult. There are bye weeks this week, which which helps that number seem inflated. I am going to sell. Ooh, I'm going to buy it. Okay, I will buy Carson Wentz having that top ten week. Uh, we've we've seen him do it before, uh, but he's finally getting his weapons back. You Philadelphia Eagles apologists, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you and Andy over here, just you you can't stop caping for Carson Wentz. He doesn't have his weapons. Mer! He's got him now. So he's it, got some. He's he's got his wet the wet the weapons that he's gonna have. He's got them. Jalen Rager is back. Dallas Goddard is back. Are you are you inferring that because he doesn't have Zachary Ertz that he's missing a weapon? <laughs> I was I was referring even worse to Alshon Jeffrey, <laughs> who he'll never have. What isn't there whispers that Alshon might be back? I I mean, look at some point he should producers he's, vet that he's getting a lot of money to not play <laughs> football. I imagine they would want him out there, but um, yeah, you know this is one of those division games, and a lot of times when you see those divisional matchups, the defenses are ready. They know the tendencies. It's lower scoring. I mean, not always, um, but I think I think the Giants' defense is slightly underrated. They. They are underrated, definitely. Uh, the the New York defense, the Washington defense, they are being outshined by how terrible the offense is. Well said. Thank you. I, I mean that. That's oh. exactly what's happening because their defenses are okay, but you can't see it 
through how bright we, the, the horrific right. offense is. <laughs> uh, Tyler Lockett. Oh, oh, brother, this line is this is way too high. So I'm I'm dropping this on the fly once again, doing Brooks's job for him. Tyler Lockett, Jason, top twenty wide receiver. Oh mercy, you and dropped you, that. From- and why why is that a feel like too like a crazy line? Because those first three weeks, Tyler Lockett was single handedly winning people their fantasy weeks. However, four or four of his last five games, he has finished outside of the top. 50 outside of the top 50 DK Metcalf has taken the mantle he has become the wide receiver one for Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks Tyler Lockett your boy Jason yes top sir 20 that is against the Los Angeles Rams that is an absolute lock in buy. I, okay, I have you're gonna no, lock it up I have no doubts look it, oh yeah I'm gonna lock it up great great job Mike um yeah, I mean, it, I'm very he, good at this job today. He has certainly um, been disappointing. You you just said four out of his last five games, not in the top fifty. That's that's atrocious. <laughs> Even with that, he is the wide receiver five on the season. This just in: the line has moved to top fifteen. This line is all over the place, but uh, you got to stay on your toes. All right, I am going to lock it in. <laughs> I, I will buy. I think that this right. is a uh, is a lock it week. Jalen Ramsey is an awesome corner and while I do not think he's going to shut down DK Metcalf I don't think that's possible uh we saw that you know Stefan Gilmore is an awesome corner he got he got manhandled by DK Metcalf Davius White excellent corner absolutely 100 percent but um m- my point is I think you could see this because of that be more of a Tyler Lockett game and I think that the Rams will be able to uh keep pace and ru- this should be a good game for us all right, and just to complete the trifecta of opposites, I thought we were best friends, but we are polar opposites on buy or sell. I'm going to sell just to rub it in your face when I sweep the uh, buy or sell. Well, this is just such a great PSA. We can be best friends and disagree. Yeah, well, well, look, look, look at what we've done. We've brought the fantasy football community together. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com, the best sports memorabilia website in all of humanity you can use our registration code ballers and you're gonna get a ten dollar credit who's on the wall today oh brother we got super camaro camaro so super camaro <laughs> it's a new nickname well the problem is i call him alvin camara now right but we call him super camario doesn't really <laughs> thank you as as he powers down the screen doesn't really make sense because you can't call him Super Camario. Then you sound like your mom from 1986. Are you going to be playing that Mario on Are your Nintendo? Are you guys Nintendos? playing that Mario game today? No, playing, mom. Playing some Tetris. Get the meatloaf. <laughs> so check it out. Get the meatloaf. You just went uh, uh, old school on us right yes. there? Yes, sir. Anyways, Is that Wedding pre- Crashers? No, no. Oh, is it oh, winning crashers? Winning. Yeah, it was winning crashers. You are right. I have been out referenced by our producer Brooks. Thank you. Anyways, pristineauction.com. Check them out. News and notes from around the league. All right, we have a light news day today. Uh, Eagles announced Tuesday they had a staff member test positive for COVID nineteen, so they will be going into the lockdown. Uh, we've seen this week after week after week, so we have no reason to expect anything but them playing, especially being a staff member. Baker Mayfield is back from the reserve COVID-19 list. He was activated because he was a close contact. We, we will be keeping our eye on Big Ben Roethlisberger from the Pittsburgh Steelers because he is on the list right now uh, from close contact as well. Yes, and his uh, next test, his, his most recent test came back negative. Um, so it, it, Big Ben should be ready to go this week, but he'll have less practice than Baker Mayfield. It's nice to see Baker. I feel like Baker is not someone that if he misses the whole week of practice, I'd be confident. It's like, that's fair. Yeah. You need to, you need to be out there this week, Baker. Dolphins have placed wide receiver Preston Williams on the injured reserve. So he will miss at least three weeks. Hopefully the NFL keeps this three week IR thing in place. Their, their IR rules have been so outdated and old fashioned of this player has they have to be gone forever they or, can't come back I'll, I'll give you two guys that can come back on the year like football is a brutal sport like 
make room for people to not count against the active roster and then come back. Yeah, I, I think I think every team in the league appreciates this current IR rule set. So I, I expect uh, there will be long-term changes. Christian McCaffrey will not participate. He has that shoulder injury he sustained on his incredible return on Sunday. What's your temperature on Christian McCaffrey, Jason? Because um, we don't really have – a ton of news. This yeah, is... there's been timelines thrown out of two to four weeks. There's been uh, speculation on, well, it really just depends on how much they want him. This is an injury you can play through. You can get a shot. Um, it, it, it's it's a pain issue. Um, but then you say, okay, well, do you really want to take your, your superstar high money contract mm -hmm. running back in games? Look, the Panthers have pleasantly surprised me left, right, and center. But they're not a competing. They're you know they're not challenging for a Super Bowl this year. They're building something special. So you probably want to build it the right way and get your superstar healthy. You saw that with the first injury. They waited until he was ready to go, and then you saw it when he was on the field. He was not hampered like we saw when uh, you know last season, right? Saquon Barkley had the same injury, came right. back much quicker, except he was not a hundred percent. So I would imagine they are going to have him sit for. Definitely this week, and I would guess one more week. It's a wild week in terms of players that we are monitoring. If you want a, something to look for, something to check for on the old news wire, there is a lot of very fantasy-relevant players who might play. They may not play. You know, Miles Sanders, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Chris Carson. Raheem, those four? Yes. I expect those four back this okay, week. That's Ra how I'm viewing them. Raheem Mostert from the San Francisco 49ers is eligible to come off the IR this week. That remains to be seen. Mark Ingram, Kenyon Drake, lots of players to be monitoring, and we will give you that news. And David Johnson, those four, Okay, I expect to not be back this week. Okay, you um, expect DJ to admit, do you include, DJ has the concussion, David Montgomery, similar situation. So today is the day to monitor those two's practice report, because usually if you don't get, it, if you don't get back to practice on that Wednesday, historically, the concussion protocol, you won't make it back. It's not a guarantee, but odds are not in your favor if you don't practice today that you'll be there for Sunday. So that would be a, a you know a Duke Johnson uh, special. Before we get into the fantasy playoff primer, I want to thank today's sponsor, Theragun. Fuckland, you've heard us talk about Theragun many times. The stress of daily life weighs on us all, whether you're an elite athlete, Jason Moore, like myself, or a regular person. Like Al like Borland, Al, or just really, really weak and scrawny, like uh, Judge Diamati back there, <laughs> trying to get through the day, muscle pain and muscle tension. It's a real thing. Uh, this is why we use our Theraguns. I love it. It is a handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combination of depth, speed, and power. I've been working on my fitness, Jason Moore. You sure have. My legs have been taking a beating. They sure have. And my Theragun is making sure that I can get back out there and perform at my very best when I'm trying to work on that fitness. And now and now the Theragun is as quiet as an electric toothbrush. That's because the all-new Gen 4 Theragun has a proprietary brushless motor that's so quiet you will wonder if it's on. Wow. That is outrageous. A silent Theragun silently massage those muscles. Uh, look, I've told you we all have one. I use mine on the reg, and right now you can try Theragun risk-free for 30 days. There is no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4 with an OLED screen personalized Theragun app, plus the quiet and power you need. It starts at only $199. Go to Theragun.com slash footballers right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's T-H-E-R-A-G-U-N dot com slash footballers. Theragun.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, all the dads out there, have you checked out the Chrysler Pacifica yet? This is like the third or fourth time me talking about it. I'm trying to get everybody in on my minivan life because it is awesome. You want to do driveline pickups, drop-offs, open the doors with the touch of a button? Hoo-ha! <laughs> Super easy. You, you want nice leather seats that you can wipe off when... Uh, Everything spills at when, all when the times. Accidents, yeah. Oh, you going on a road trip and you want to flip them TVs on and say, "Hey, just watch this, watch this family movie while uh, you know me and mommy talk in the front." No more shouting. I'll turn this thing around. Yeah, you want to have uh, chairs that store all the way down 
uh, and give you maximum capacity. You want the 2019 IIHS top safety pick? Look, all of that is the Chrysler Pacifica, and right now they're offering the Fantasy Footballers listeners an exclusive $1,000 bonus cash offer towards a new Pacifica or the Pacifica Hybrid. Visit PacificaFootballers.com and sign up to receive the offer, updates, and more from the Chrysler brand. And now, with Pacifica Family Pricing, your family is their family. Customers can receive Chrysler's employee price plus the $1,000 for being a Fantasy Footballers listener. Again, that's PacificaFootballers.com. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? <laughs> All right. I just saw the graphic for the first time. Uh, B-Cat turned me into Powerline at the end of that at YouTube.com. How good did you feel? Footballers.com. I've never looked better. I have never looked better. I have often... Uh, fantasized about being Powerline from a goofy movie. Excellent work, b -Cat. All right, let us get into the Fantasy Playoff Primer. Now a reminder to everybody out there, you already know this, but just a quick reminder, schedule is not everything. It is a part of the piece, and now is the time to start looking at that, making adjustments, because uh, there are certain players that, the schedule really does matter. Let's start at the quarterback positions. Like Kirk Cousins, Minnesota Vikings uh, quarterback. He is a fine streaming player. He's surrounded by talent. However, his playoff matchups, weeks 14 through 16, Tampa Bay, at, I should say, at Tampa Bay, Chicago, at New Orleans. That is a situation where if you're rolling with Kirk Cousins, and I, I get it that maybe in your redraft league you aren't rolling with Kirk Cousins, but maybe you're in a dynasty league. And right. Kirk Cousins has been the player you've been rolling with. You might want to make an adjustment for Kirk Cousins. I feel like you're talking to yourself here in your dynasty league where you've often had to roll with Kirk Cousins. but Perhaps I am. Um, no, it's, it's a good point. When you're talking about streamer quality guys, Kirk Cousins, uh, Matthew Stafford is another one. He's a guy that you pick up from time to time and you play him. You're not going to rely on those guys. Stafford with Green Bay at Tennessee and Tampa Bay has a bad schedule. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, so, you know, you, you take a look at them if you've been streaming them. The, the reality is for streamers, they're usually going to be off your roster anyways, and you're going to be picking guys up. But just be aware when you're looking out there. If you're, are, if you're in that streaming category, the guy that I would look at uh, for, you know, maybe an early pickup before these weeks hit is Jared Goff. Jared Goff okay. does not have a great week 14 matchup against New England. I think he could be fine. Goff usually thrives in good matchups, but is not reliable week in and week out. But 15 and 16, you're talking the Jets and then championship week at Seattle. Mm. That is juicy. And uh, apparently my new favorite player in the NFL – the herbivore, oh, Justin. <laughs> oh, I uh, like it. You like it? <laughs> Let's talk about these shoes. <laughs> these shoes ain't dropping. These shoes ain't these, dropping, these, Mike. Look, these, these shoes are made for walking, my friend. And that's just what they'll do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Justin Herbert uh, from the Los Angeles Chargers, the rookie sensation who he's not on your waiver wire, but maybe he is a quarterback you can uh, scoop up for cheaper in the trade market. I, I don't know if it's possible or not. Maybe the person who scooped him up doesn't value him as much, but here's the situation for Justin Herbert. Atlanta Falcons, Las Vegas Raiders, and then Denver in championship week. Denver, you know, is kind of a hit or miss situation, but Atlanta, Las Vegas, that is a delightful situation for Justin Herbert to get you off to on the right foot for your fantasy playoffs. Yeah, that's, it's awesome. He is someone that, you know, while he's been on fire, there's always skepticism. There's doubt because he's a rookie. I've I talked about, Andy's talked about, the shoe's going to drop at some point because he's not going to stay on fire. When that does, if let's say this happens. This week, Miami, they're a very good defense. Sure. Let's say they, they, they bottle him up a little bit. He has a mediocre to bad game. If that happens, that gives you your window to try to trade for Justin Herbert, even if you're not playing him until the playoffs, that that schedule is awesome. It, you know, if this was Baker Mayfield with that schedule, I would be like, 
you should target Baker Mayfield. It's the it's the number one schedule through the fantasy playoffs. But it's not Baker. It's a guy who's been on fire. I I, I think Justin Herbert is. You know, I was thinking about this. We play in a lot of best ball leagues, mm -hmm. and I've looked at my best ball lineups, and he's probably the number one. You know, rostered player on the best team in the league. Often, he, often he didn't even go drafted, but right. but when he did. Whatever team accidentally lucked into <laughs> Justin Herbert this year in their umpteenth round has just been has been dominating. We do have a little news update. I'm not going to hit the breaking news, but Christian McCaffrey. This is from Adam Schefter. Oh, be good news. Be good news. He's not expected to play That's on Sunday, and now he is considered week to week. From day yeah. to day to week to week, That's... not the type of news you want to hear. Now, these, uh, these two big boys at the quarterback position – are possible trade targets. In fact, in our league of record, Jason, you traded for one, and I traded for one. We both have called our shots, preparing for the playoffs, hoping we get there. We'll start with Tampa Bay. Tom Brady, he gets Minnesota. He gets uh, on the road against the Atlanta Falcons and then on the road against the Detroit Lions. That is very nice. That is a very nice matchup uh, play for, for Tom Brady for the great one. Baltimore's Lamar Jackson, who has – man has been uh very disappointing for Lamar Jackson to be fair he's not crushing your fantasy teams like he's not out there putting up duds because of the rushing ability but he is not giving you those ceiling games like he did week one yeah I mean if you drafted Lamar Jackson you are in a struggle to make the playoffs because one he hasn't been even good he, he just has he's been okay but he hasn't been good He's not helping you win anything, and you sacrificed, you know, as early as a second round pick in order to draft him. So your roster has been majorly hurt this season by Lamar Jackson, which means either do what you can to make the playoffs. Right. How aggressive are you in targeting Lamar for a playoff run? Let's say you have a you have you've been streaming or whatever. You have a solid quarterback, but you you know that once you're in the playoffs, it's all or nothing. You need ceiling from every single one of your players. How Are you confident in Lamar Jackson? Are you just willing to maybe try and trade some bench pieces? Are you going to be aggressive? How are you going after him? I'm, I'm, I'm not confident that he's going to eat hamburgers all over the field, as <laughs> you would say. As one would say. Um, you know, he's, he's had some good matchups where he's still been mediocre at best, but I would, I would be kicking the tires. I'd try to trade uh, for him. Here's a quarterback. That, this might be one of those – you know, we don't want to overdo the schedule. Of course. But this is the quarterback. I said earlier, there's someone I would be looking to trade right now. And it's Deshaun Watson. All right. Deshaun Watson's been unbelievable. I mean, he you Sans talk about, Bob. You right. Sans Bob, he's been great. Bill O'Brien's out of the way, and all of a sudden uh, you see what Deshaun Watson's always had the capability of just being an outstanding weekly starter. He's dominating, and I think his trade value is very high. I think you could get a lot for Deshaun Watson. And I will not be playing. I mean, his playoff weeks at are Chicago. at Chicago, who has been locking down everyone. Are you going to really want to start your playoffs playing your quarterback at Chicago? You don't really want to. It's Deshaun Watson, so if you had him, you're going to. This is why you're saying you're trying to trade yeah. him. Uh, then he goes at Indianapolis. That's tough. Those are two of the hardest schedules for a quarterback, two of the, the, the hardest matchups to start your playoffs. I feel like I don't want, you know, I would, if I had Justin Herbert and Deshaun Watson on my team in those weeks, I would be putting Justin Herbert in or Tom Brady in or Lamar Jackson in if you can trade for those pieces. And right now, because Deshaun Watson's been on fire, I think it's plus. I think you're trading Deshaun Watson for Tom Brady plus something of value um and I think you could probably trade him straight up for Lamar Jackson would you do that if you had Deshaun Watson who's been oh, on fire man would you actually trade him for Lamar Jackson who's been stinky poo poo <laughs> with the you know scientifically speaking right I'm just I want to use science words and be analytical here but the stinky poo poo has been hurting your team so the question is does the playoff schedule for both of these guys being on polar opposites change the equation where you would be willing to do that uh, I I don't know off the top of my head but I can at least provide you with this advice I traded for Lamar Jackson in our league of record 
I was looking at a quarterback upgrade, and I could have gone after Deshaun Watson. I chose not to, and I chose to go after Lamar Jackson, and the playoff schedule was a factor in that decision. So it, it at least crossed my mind. Trading the straight up, though, is hard because you still have to make the playoffs. Right, and two of the next three weeks before the playoffs, those are difficult games right. for Lamar Jackson. He's got at New England and at Pittsburgh. So you, you have to factor that in. That's why I say it's got to be plus. Right. And, and whatever that extra piece is needs to be something relevant. At the running back position, players that you should try to get on your team but probably can't. Yes. We just need to highlight this. Derrick Henry. Oh, Derrick Henry. It is Yeti season. Oh, it's going to be so the, cold. The temperatures are going down. The snow is about to fall from the sky, and he is about to transform. But he doesn't have a great schedule, does he? At Jacksonville. Oh, that's unbelievable. Detroit. Well, that's even better. At Green Bay. That's the best of all three of Derek, those. Derek the Yeti in Green Bay in week 16. Oh, my goodness. Oh, brother. <laughs> oh, dude, the abominable snowman will be shaking in his boots having to fight that Yeti. Last year, we were in... Uh, he did, and Brooks is reminding us, he did just have a bad week. If there is any slight window crack... This is the time that you have to go and get it done. Yeah. Uh, last year, we, uh, Mike and I um, were in the NFL League One Challenge, a celebrity league where half of the bracket was experts, half of the bracket were uh, celebrities. And we took down the expert bracket. Our yeah. team was dominant. You're done uh, right. Were, were we the best record with the highest points? I don't know. I, I think so. Who, who, no one can check it. So, uh, yes. Yeah, nobody <laughs> can check it. So, yes. But we were great. We beat the expert bracket. We get to the championship, and in that championship game, our team was awesome. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter because our opponent in week 16 had the number one and number two running backs on the week. Bo both of them were on their roster, and so that was, that was Saquon Barkley and Kenyon Drake. Mm -hmm. If there's any way you could possibly pay up or you just already have this and you're just thrilled hearing the number two schedule behind Derrick Henry is Aaron Jones. Woo! I mean, if you had Derrick Henry and Aaron Jones on the same roster in, right. in, in week 16 or 15 and 14, I feel like that's just championship central. It is an unfair advantage. Now, let's talk about a guy who maybe you can get on your team. Maybe you can trade for him. He left with a concussion. He has been meh. Nah. But, but he's putting up fantasy points uh, regardless of his madness and the team's madness on offense. Chicago's David Montgomery gets to take on Houston. Then he's on the road against Minnesota and on the road against Jacksonville. That schedule is pretty solid. David Montgomery, Jason, buying or selling? Are you going to be buying or selling that schedule? No, I'm not, I'm not buying the schedule. It is a good schedule. It's the third best schedule for running backs through the championship weeks. But David Montgomery has – proven that he is what he is every game it just doesn't matter does he have a hard game against Tampa Bay that's a difficult game who's the running back 15 does he have an incredible schedule the next week against Carolina doesn't matter he's the running back 14 <laughs> uh, it's just this is what he is every week he's right. like 14 to 24 on the RB finish I'd like to have him on my roster but I'm not buying the you need to target him some players take advantage of the matchups some players don't um, and I, you know, that's why I'm all hot and bothered about Derek Yeti, because you're talking about a player who will beat up on bad teams in the important make the playoff weeks for their NFL team. I think he's going to scorch earth. All right. Running backs with bad schedules. Let's see if you are concerned. Jason Moore, Arizona, maybe it's Kenyon Drake. Maybe it's Chase Edmonds. That remains to be seen. Giants, Philadelphia, and then divisional foes, San Francisco 49ers. Does that freak you out? Um, it freaks me out. Yeah, it does. I think we'll have clarity on the Arizona backfield by then. Uh, I expect that it will be Drake, that he'll be back and in, 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 in well, yeah, his role. But by then, but right now is when you have to make the maneuver to be ready for that. So you have to call your shot right now. Well, that I mean, you can't. Trade you deadlines can't. are approaching. Right, but with Drake, you can't trade him. I mean, nobody's trading for Kenyon Drake right now. He hasn't been good Are and you? is currently injured. I, no, I, I wouldn't. I mean, can I can I trade um, Jerry Judy for him? 
It, sure. Then I would I I would okay. do that. Uh, you know, my my wide receiver three or four on a team. If I can just uh, you know unload something that is not really a necessary starter for my roster and add someone. Sure, but it's not a good schedule um, for Arizona. And I would say that that them and uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are the two teams that have relevant running backs who have a bad matchup where I worry about maybe they'll just throw the ball more. They're perfectly capable doing that. These are funnel defenses where uh, the team is asking you to throw. They're aiming stopping the run and their schedule. Um, here is the worst schedule, though, for a running back. The oh, absolute yeah. worst by a wide margin. Week 14 at Tampa Bay, they lock down running backs. I don't like it. Then the next week, Chicago. They're one of the best defenses in the league. And then in the championship week, on the road in Indianapolis, who is the fourth best against running backs as far as fantasy points given up. This is the most brutal schedule that any running back has. And it goes to the number one running back, Woo! Dalvin Cook. Oh, boy. Oh, mercy. We were talking in the studio before the show. And I brought up the question, would you trade Dalvin Cook, who's been unbelievable? Yeah, you can't stop him. Would you trade him for Derrick Henry, who's going to be unbelievable in the playoffs? You could make – I mean, I, everybody would take that trade. If you offered Dalvin Cook for Derrick Henry, I think everyone would say, yes, please, give yeah, me I, Dalvin Cook. Yeah, I think Cook. it would go through. And we came to a consensus. We both agreed. Why don't you reveal the answer? Uh, I would not trade Dalvin Cook for Derrick Henry. Oh, the schedule is not everything. Dalvin Cook is unstoppable. Now, I, I am, I would say I have a personal bias in this. I have Dalvin Cook almost everywhere this year. It just worked out that way. Congratulations! And it has been great. It has been fantastic. The difference uh, between Dalvin Cook and other running backs. I mean. Number let me, one, let me highlight it ta for you. talent level, and then the pass catching just changes everything. Let me highlight the All right. fantasy difference between some of these backs. Right now on the season, Dalvin Cook is the running back one, and Derrick Henry is the running back three. So if you're telling me, wait, you can trade just down to the running back three, who mm -hmm. you just got hot and bothered is going to scorch the earth in the playoffs, why wouldn't you do that? Well, Dalvin Cook is averaging 27.6 fantasy points per game. Derrick Henry is averaging 18. Mm. almost 10 points a game fewer. Dalvin Cook is the number one running back, and he missed a game. <laughs> he missed a game, <laughs> and he scored more than the number two Alvin Kamara. Dalvin Cook has just been unbelievable, and there are certain guys that the schedule is not going to stop, and I think Dalvin Cook is going to be one of those players. Now, if you want to be scared about injury history, and you say, look, I've been worried every single week about Dalvin Cook's injury. I'm going to call my shot that he's not even going to be there for those playoff weeks, and I want to trade him for Derrick Henry plus something. I, I can understand that. I can get behind that, but personally, myself, you, we're yeah. not trading Dalvin Cook based on the terrible playoff schedule. At the wide receiver position, the teams with the worst uh, matchups here, no surprise, the Minnesota Vikings, Adam Thielen, and Justin Jefferson are involved in those same go uh, same game games as Dalvin Cook. Houston, Will Fuller and Brandon Cooks, as highlighted by Deshaun Watson. Uh, also Seattle. I don't know. I don't know. If there's really anything actionable here. Like I'm not bailing on Will Fuller. <laughs> You're certainly not bailing on anyone from the Seattle Seahawks. The Minnesota Vikings, though, would you take this opportunity? to get out of the wide receiver game for Minnesota. It, it is it is something that I would consider. If if there's a sell high, if you can flip um, you know, someone like a Justin Jefferson on a good game for uh, you know, Justin Jefferson pair him with someone and get an Allen Robinson who's been great and his playoff schedule is great, I would I would of course do that. Interesting. You can, so you have the confidence in Robinson with he gets to take on Houston, Minnesota, and Jacksonville. It's a great schedule. Yeah, I think with that schedule, look, we talked about earlier. Some guys aren't affected by schedule, some are. And I don't think Nick Foles is someone I trust in every matchup. But if you're telling me, can he complete passes when there's not a pass rush? Like the biggest problem with the Bears is the pass rush. The offensive line has just been terrible. Nick Foles steps back to throw it, and he's leaning back, launching it up because he's on his way to the ground. 
And if he's facing teams that don't have good pass rushes who give him time to throw the ball, you know what's going on, Allen Robinson. So I, I do like Allen Robinson's schedule. I think to some degree, if you're just talking um, flex options, it, it applies to Darnell Mooney as as well. Sure. Rookie, I want to call him a rookie sensation, but he's been on the Bears. So he's <laughs> like a, a, what would you call that? He's yeah. sensational, but it hasn't actually been I don't know. productive. I can't think of a word right now. But other great matchups, the Cincinnati Bengals, they're coming off the bye week. Maybe you can sneak Tyler Boyd or T. Higgins away from their fantasy managers. The Los Angeles Chargers, we highlighted uh, Justin Herbert's schedule. I've been telling you week after week, get Keenan Allen if you can. The, that trade window is probably slammed shut, but Keenan Allen is going to be unbelievable. But let's take a look at the loss. Would that apply to Mike Williams as well? Would yes. You? Yeah, it, it certainly would. But I mean, he's a higher variance player. I was just saying, like, Keenan Allen, the targets are there. The ceiling is there for him as, way, as well with the way that Justin Herbert has been playing. The Los Angeles Rams, Jason. Yes. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, they get the Patriots, which it's, it's okay. But then you get the Jets and you get the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, I mean, I was talking about Jared Goff being if you're in that streaming category and you don't have one of the greats. So which one schedule. are you going after? I'm going after probably both. Well, um, I said which one, Jason. I didn't say are you going. I, it, I Robert would, Woods or Cooper Cup? I would say um, I usually prefer Robert Woods. I like the first read. I like the more targets, uh, you know, historically speaking. But when I'm putting together my roster, it really does change. You know, if I've got – um, a Keenan Allen already in my roster. The the high floor, he's going to get 12 targets a week is the expectation. Then I might want the more touchdown reliable player in Cooper Cup who can go out there and score two touchdowns at a far higher rate than Robert Woods, which is ironic because Woods is the most recent of the two to do that. But it, you know, historically speaking, it's been Cooper Cup. I would like both players, um, and I, I think you can acquire them. They've been a major they being the Rams offense passing attack has been a major disappointment for what people hoped when they drafted him. What's wild about Robert Woods versus Cooper Cup this year? Some numbers that I mean we we know them inherently, but I think hearing them out loud is going to blow your mind, man. Cooper Cup is seeing 25% of the Los Angeles Rams targets. Robert Woods 19%. That's not what they do. Cooper Cup has 25% of the wide receiver touchdowns for the Rams. Robert Woods has 50% of them. That's not what the Rams do. <laughs> no, it is. That's why I said it's not the most recent examples that we have, but historically speaking, over the last three years, that's – and I still what, – what do you expect? Do you think it's more of what we're seeing now with a higher target volume to cup and higher touchdown opportunity for Woods? Or do you think it's been what it's been the majority of the last – two years or three years I think maybe just that the touchdown regression the positive regression for Robert Woods has finally just hit and it's not like he's scoring it at, at an outrageous pace yeah he, those he numbers just, he just was always underproducing in terms of how many receptions and how many yards he received on an annual basis right now Robert Woods is the wide receiver 16 he has busted twice and wide receiver 37 one of those times, so not not a bust. Not, not great, but not a bust game, but only really busted twice. Meanwhile, Cooper Cup has damaged your team about half of the time. I think one of the things that's a little misleading on those numbers is, you know, you talk about 50% of the wide receiver receiving touchdowns. You know, Robert Woods right now on – the season has four receiving touchdowns, so it's yeah. really and just Cooper a, Cup only has two. It's been a lower volume, and if I had to say going forward, which one of those two players gets more touchdowns, I would certainly put my chips on on Cooper Cup. And but you, and you have a couple of rushing touchdowns for Robert Woods as well. Yes. All right, let's go to the tight ends because you gotta. Jamie Grandpa leads the way with one of one of the better schedules for the tight end playoff run. Rob Gronkowski. Noah Fant, and the, the boys from Minnesota. Uh, Travis Kelsey does as well, but good luck trading for Travis Kelsey. No, that's just 
that's just a, a hype piece for all yeah, the if you people who Travis have Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. It's like, hey, good news. Guess what? Be very excited. He's got an even better schedule. Jimmy Graham, Rob Gronkowski, Noah Fant, Jason, who are you trying to trade for, if any of these players? Yeah, I, I think those are I the, mean, but by trading for Jimmy Graham, I mean trading for a, a bench player for the waiver wire. Right, I'm going to trade my fab dollars for <laughs> sure. Jimmy Graham. Um, I think those are the three players that you're looking at saying – um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to target, and I would put them in the order of Noah Fant, Rob Gronkowski, Jimmy Graham. That's what I would do as well. And I think you can acquire all of them affordably. Noah Fant has a lot of hype. He's had plenty of targets, but he's been mostly disappointing. This last week. Because he's been mostly hurt. Yeah, this last week he rolled his ankle again, missed a chunk of the game, came back in and was limited. Um, I I. I think that you could very easily find Noah Fant after waivers went through probably this morning as you're as you're listening to this that someone dropped Noah Fant um, or if they haven't maybe they picked up another tight end and they're just rostering both it's not going to cost you a lot to get Fant but in those playoffs I think that he's probably the streaming category tight end I would target the most at the defensive position because this one is pretty crucial too where you want to yes. start getting ready to play your special or your your DST, uh, the matchups that you want to go after. We always talk about targeting that a few weeks early. This is the time of the year where it is not uncommon to see my roster having multiple DSTs as, as I get ready for the weeks ahead. Teams with great matchups. Arizona, they have a, an excellent matchup against the Giants and then the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, then week 16 is San Francisco. We'll see how that one looks by then. They're just such an influx offense right now. The Rams, they get the Patriots and the Jets. Cleveland, Baltimore, probably not, but then the Giants and the Jets. Uh, so there are there are teams that you can mismatch uh, their schedules. Like you want to open with the Rams against the Patriots and the Jets and then yep. and then shut it down with the Browns with the Browns against the Jets the the Browns are yeah my ex exactly if, how many Jets can you get in your playoffs <laughs> well that's you, you could get them all because you could roll them bones go with the, with the Seahawks against the Jets are you willing to play the Seattle Seahawks who get to play the Jets and Washington in their first two weeks of the playoffs would you yeah, would I, you push them chips in? I, I I would. I I I know that they've been a bad defense, but there are certain teams that will not be able to take advantage, and you just named them. Um, so I I would be willing to look at Seattle, uh, even though they've been, you know, so horrific. And and some of this will depend on your scoring systems. Some because defense has changed from league to league so widely. If your league focuses on yardage then probably not, you know, because Seattle gives up a ton of yards. But if your league focuses on sacks and turnovers and, and scoring touchdowns defensively, that's where your big scores come from, then Seattle would be good. But the, the main defense I'm looking to pick up going into the playoffs is the Cleveland Browns. You just need someone for the week 14, but I want the week 15, 16. I want the Giants Jets in those major championship weeks because I think it's a combination of they're bad, I think the Browns' defense, if they get healthy by then, sure, they've got some pieces that can really – they can score touchdowns and sack the quarterback. It's it's going to be fun. I don't think you need to pick the Browns up just yet where we are, but in a couple weeks, that's when you're going to want to make that transaction happen and be ready for the playoffs. Again, the schedule is not everything, but hopefully you feel prepared as we have highlighted some of the players that have the good matchups and the bad ones. And speaking of matchups, Jason – Thursday night breakdown. Oh, that was a professional segue. I told you I'm good at this. Oh job. man, been smashing it over here. Just hope the hope the people at home are paying attention. Yeah, get the glass away from Mike. It's just breaking things, destroying it. I hope Andy's paying attention. Oh no, I'm coming for him. Calling shots. <laughs> uh, speaking of great matches, Thursday night. We got a good one. The Indianapolis Colts, five and three, take on the Tennessee Titans, six and two. We have a forty nine point over under. That's not the best. But this will be a very entertaining football game. The Titans are favored currently by two points. They are the team that is at home, so that certainly makes sense. Jason. Phillip Rivers, in or out? 
out out of my lineup, out of my life. Um, you know, I, the I, matchup is good. The match- I mean, I, I say it in jest because I know what your answer is going to be. But if you've been streaming the P River, you've been just fine. It's been it's been lukewarm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's mixed. The river's cold, and the and the P is warm. There, is, there, there are spots of the river that are warmer than others. Yeah, I mean, if if you look at the last several weeks, obviously last week was tough. Baltimore's defense is outlandishly good. I don't really want to play anybody against Baltimore. Correct. And he stunk. He was the the quarterback 28. The prior two weeks, he was a top 10 quarterback, but that was Cincinnati and Detroit. Now, Tennessee is in the middle. Tennessee is not a great defense, but they're not a, a cakewalk matchup either. The last six weeks, they have been uh, the 23rd ranked team against fantasy quarterbacks, 22 overall in the season. So yeah, exactly. There's, it's it's a plus matchup. There's 10 better plus matchups. I, <laughs> I would put them in. I would put them in the middle, middle of the pack. All right. Um, and and the issue that I have with starting Philip Rivers, and this is really my biggest, well, my second biggest question of this game, is who are the real receiving options here for the Indianapolis Colts? It's become a major problem for them that hopefully by the end of the season you know if Pascal and Pittman can step it up and get experience while T.Y. Hilton is up maybe they get healthy and have a receiving core but right now I don't know what to do with Indianapolis Colts receiving core I don't know who to target can you put Marcus Johnson in and hope for the big play can you rely on Michael Pittman Jr. who's I mean look this has been a great rookie wide receiver class just as they were pegged to be rookie wide receivers get better as the season goes on you know but you can't trust them yet you haven't seen it no you you have not had the breakup performance from Michael Pittman that we have hoped for but the Tennessee defense they are 31st against wide receivers giving up over 40 points a game to the position Uh, I should say that's over the last six weeks I mean that someone here will take advantage of that Uh, it's it's a tougher call in a redraft situation I don't know that I'm throwing the dart on any of these players but let's say you had to throw the dart you're you're forced to start one which one are you going are you going Marcus Johnson who is seeing the air yards he's seeing the snaps Michael Pittman who he he's had he hasn't had that breakout game like I said but he had seven, he saw targets. seven targets, four for 56 this past week. Played on 87% of snaps. And that's, and that and was, that's against Baltimore. And it was coming back off of an injury. If there's a guy that I had to pick for this game, um, if we're talking about a redraft, uh, someone I'm going to start in, in my you know flex category, but of course not the flex spot. I'm going to put him into my wide receiver spot. It, it would be Michael Pittman. I think he's really talented. Um, this matchup, as you said, for wide receivers is good. So Pittman would be my choice. Now, if this is DFS and you want a really, uh, you know, a, a cheaper option that could just have that deep bomb, you know, in a tournament play, Marcus Johnson. In fact, we have a uh, we have a Thursday night showdown article in the DFS pass highlighting this matchup in every Thursday night matchup, um, which is half off right now. If yeah. you uh, check that out at DFSPass.com. Yep. And T.Y. Hilton, they're. Alleged number one wide receiver, right? Wide receiver. He's been listed as a full participant for Tuesday's walkthrough. Looks like we might see Hilton back on the field, but he has been very disappointing uh, for fantasy purposes. At the tight end position, the only team in the NFL, I think the only team in history that has three tight ends that have nicknames from the fantasy footballers mm. Trey Burton, Jack Doyle, Mo Alley Cox, Gigantor. Jack Doyle is in the concussion protocol, so maybe that trims it up a little bit. Uh, no one performed, or I should say Trey Burton did not perform last week. Are you willing to stream him this week if Jack Doyle misses? If Jack Doyle misses, he'll be in the streaming category. I think there's other options I would prefer. Um, being that he's in the concussion protocol and it's a Thursday night football game, I would expect him to not be active. So this should be a two-man group. You do get a little scared. You saw Moali Cox used... Uh, you know, I was surprised last week when all three were active. He was getting some routes down the field, and he, I mean, he is. I, feel, I I don't understand why he's not their number one most utilized nobody does tight end because nobody use Gigantor use I mean, him appropriately. I know that there's a lot that goes into the tight end position behind the scenes, especially when it comes to run blocking. Yes. Um, you know, so hopefully he just keeps getting more and more worked in. W- would you pick Trey Burton over Molly Cox in this uh, matchup? 
I mean, I want to go with neither. Uh, Mo Ali Cox was on the field a little bit more, 51% of the snaps compared to 43% for Trey Burton. However, Burton did have the four targets. It only turned into one reception for six yards. Not happy with that, but I think I would still go with Trey Burton over Mo Alley if I had to make that decision. On the other side of the ball, A.J. Brown, wide receiver one, super stud. He is locked and loaded. He has a touchdown in five straight, seven targets in every game this year. He is fantastic. Corey Davis, just when you thought you could play Corey Davis, just when you thought it was safe to get back in the water. You get the goose. You got the goose. Now, we talked about this uh, last week, the fact that if if people were dropping Corey Davis, I would personally look to pick him up. Now, unfortunately, this isn't a great matchup, but you one of the things you have to consider in this goose is that Ryan Tannehill completed 10 passes. So Fair. most of the offense was goosed. I mean, if you go back, you know, a couple of weeks, uh, week six against Houston, Ryan Tannehill completed 30 passes. So it's just a matter of what is the prescription for this game. Do you expect it to be higher scoring? It's a 49-point over-under. Do you expect them to have to throw the ball? It's a it's a really good defense and they're really, really good against running backs. So maybe this isn't a Derrick Henry game where they're going to need to pass the ball more. I don't know that I would play Corey Davis, but I would roster him. Yeah, I can agree with that. Uh, I don't. This isn't the matchup that I want to put Corey Davis in. But speaking of the running backs, this is, people were wondering, why aren't you talking about him? I was saving the best for last. Mm -hmm. The Indianapolis Colts running backs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what? Yeah, what do you do? Jonathan Taylor who is their starter. Uh, he he had the touchdown, right, this past week? Yes. Am I remembering that right? But Naheem Hines is still the involved in the passing work. Jordan Wilkins is still involved in taking away Jonathan Taylor's carries, as we will call it. What are you doing? Are you starting anybody? Are you putting Jonathan Taylor down on the bench? Look, the matchup is good enough to start these running backs. You have to say, who do you believe it's going to be? The last two weeks, the carry count has been with uh, Jordan Wilkins. I went and watched all the press conferences after yesterday's show to try to see what was really going on. Taylor had the fumble. Taylor had the fumble, and, and then, then he only touched the ball one time. And that was yeah. early. That was an early fumble. Um, and Taylor only touched the ball one time the rest of the game. Then there was a lot of questions on the press conference about what's your confidence in him. Um, he said he's super confident in him, but uh, the offensive coordinator also did talk up Jordan Wilkins as someone that deserves to to continue to get more work. So I think you're going to have a at least two-headed committee and probably three-headed with Naeem Hines in there. If I had to start one, I'm starting – Jonathan Taylor and I would start Jonathan Taylor I think he's you know someone that should finish the week around running back 15 to 18 the past two weeks have been the lowest snap share that Jonathan Taylor has seen on the season and that includes week one where everything was Naheem Hines after Marlon Mack went down with the Achilles injury right and and you don't want to excuse that and not pay attention to it you don't want to say well here's the reason why but you also need context for it and, and know that it can happen again. If there's a fumble for Jonathan Taylor, he's done. So if you want to take that risk out, yeah, I I didn't I didn't take Frank Reich for a for a Bruce for a, for yeah, a Bruce for, for, a, for a Coughlin. I mean, what are you doing, Frank Reich? I hate when running back. Well, I, I will say this: the one the one thing that I might agree more with on Frank Reich is because Jonathan Taylor had a major fumbling problem in college. Mm -hmm. That was an issue. They you, you fumble often and you lose games. I don't want to bench a running back who fumbles to make it get in their head and, and penalize them and, you know, whatnot. But at the same time, you've got to make sure Jonathan Taylor knows the importance of not fumbling considering his history with it. So I think Jonathan Taylor comes out. They give him the confidence. They give him the lead role. Uh, he still looks like the better back to me. But if he fumbles again, watch out. Reminder, it is the Thursday game, so do not start a player in your flex position. Move them into the positional uh, spot. We will have more matchups tomorrow. We will have our starts of the week tomorrow. We will take it up to 100 tomorrow. 
Jason, I don't want to be that guy, but that might be the best episode of the Fantasy Footballers podcast in history. Oh, my goodness. We did it. We did it, America. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.